Okay, so good afternoon. My name is Diana Lee. I'm in the Office of Advanced Reactor Technologies, and I'll be presenting the scope for RC4, which is Computational Methodologies for Advanced Reactors. So the Office of Advanced Reactor Technologies is looking to uh, increase the technical readiness of Generation 4 reactors in support of commercial deployment by vendors. The Advanced Reactor Technology Methods scope is actually three separate scopes under RC 4.1 for sodium cooled fast reactors, RC 4.2 for high temperature gas reactors, and RC 4.3 for molten salt reactors, and this includes the fluoride salt cooled high temperature reactors. So in the first of the three scopes for fast reactor methods, uh, here's an overview of some of the research activities that the program has done. Uh, the Fast Reactor Methods program is seeking to create practical tools that will allow study and analysis of core neutronics, thermal hydraulics, and structural performance. The Fast Reactor Methods program has also been working to enhance the SAS4A and SAS-SIS-1 codes to allow accident analysis and to understand metal fuel failures. We are incorporating the sodium accident analysis capabilities of contained LMR into MELCOR, which will allow us to assess sodium fires. And last year's NEOP scope was focused on enhancement of these codes, as well as verification and validation, and we also performed some uncertainty analysis. For fiscal year 17, the Fast Reactor Methods program is focused in Sodium fire modeling, we want to understand the behavior of air entrainment at the top of sodium uh, pools during a fire. And we're also looking for high quality models that will allow us to look at fuel bundles with wire wrapped rods and uh, heat transfer. These models need to be three dimensional and provide measurements of velocity, temperature, and second order statistics. In your proposal, please ensure that your scope will cover multiple bundle sizes and a variety of flow regimes. Also, we highly encourage time-dependent measurements of wall shear and pressure, which will allow us to understand uh, the heat transfer near the fuel rods and cooling. Now, for further information on what type of scope we're looking for, I highly encourage you to get in contact with Tanju Sofu, who is the technical point of contact at Argonne National Lab. And I've also included here the contact information oops, for Thomas Zielinski, who is our federal point of contact. So that was the sodium fast reactor scope, and now moving on to the high temperature reactor methods program. And that's under RC 4.2. I am the federal point of contact for this scope, and Hans Gauger is the technical point of contact. Uh, with respect to high temperature reactors, we are very interested in the phenomena related to loss of force cooling, uh, which may or may not be coupled with uh, loss of cooling inventory. Uh, we need high quality data, which is currently not available, so that means we need separate effects tests and mixed effects tests to be completed to look at phenomena such as mass flow and heat transfer. Uh, any of these separate effects tests and mixed effects tests We'll need to use the reference designs for the General Atomics 350 megawatt modular high temperature gas reactor or the gas turbine modular helium reactor. And generally, integral effect tests are too large in scope to be part of NEOPS, but we do want your separate effects test and mixed effects test to take into consideration our high temperature test facility and the natural circulation shutdown test facility. So as I mentioned, we're very interested in phenomena associated with loss of force cooling. Uh, so this year we're looking for proposals that will allow us to understand core channel to plenum flow exchange, and in the case of a pipe break, the mixing of helium jets with cavity air. Uh, at Argonne National Lab, our natural circulation shutdown test facility has looked at the air-based reactor cavity cooling system. And we are now working to transition the NSTF to a water-based RCCS. So we are also interested in proposals that can provide global analysis of the air-cooled RCCS 
and provide a scaling study for the full-scale model. And we're also interested in developing uh, models for the water-based NSTF to allow us to understand heat transfer and um, flow, again, to see phenomena such as boiling, various flow conditions, and understand flow instabilities. Also, along the lines of uh, the RCCS, we are also very interested in experiments that will allow us to uh, better our models for looking at NSTF and scaling between the number of riser tubes and channels, I mean chimneys. And for the water-based NSTF, we're looking for models that will allow us to evaluate uh, flow and um, in the case of flow anomalies, the loads that will result on piping. Now, for all of these scopes, I highly encourage you to get in contact with high temperature reactor vendors, Argonne National Lab, Idaho National Lab, and they can help you make the proposals to uh, incorporate the operational behavior and transient behavior that we are looking for. Additionally, uh, we are very partial to codes or enhancements of the NEEMS toolkit, so if possible, please avoid making completely new codes. Uh, uh, all experiments and verification and validation uh, activities will have to be performed to NQA1 requirements. And of course, the data experiments that will be provided will have to be entered into INL's NGNP data management and analysis system. Uh, also, take into consideration that uh, for design and licensing activities, we usually rely on low order models. So when you use your instrumentation, you can take that into consideration. But we are also encouraging high order computational fluid dynamic models because that will help us understand the uncertainties that are inherent in low order models. Okay, and now for the last uh, area in the method scope. This is for molten salt reactors, which is under RC 4.3. Uh, again, I am the federal point of contact for this. And David Holcomb at Oak Ridge National Lab is the technical point of contact. With respect to molten salt reactors, we are focused on fluoride and chloride-based salts. Uh, but it's very common that uh, simulant fluids are used instead of the salts because the salts are difficult to handle. So now we're looking for proposals that will confirm that the simulant fluids actually behave like the actual salts so that any data that we get for verification uh, is actually applicable. Also, we're looking for proposals that will measure salt properties in the regime above 700 degrees Celsius. We have not had measurements of optical properties of salts in this temperature range, and we would like to understand how heat transfer behaves at this temperature. Finally, we recently had a technology-specific workshop on molten salt reactors, which was hosted by GAIN. And in this workshop, there was a lot of interest expressed for liquid fuel reactor modeling. So we invite proposals that will look at liquid fuel uh, as opposed to what we currently have, which has been focused on solid fuel. Okay, so in summary, for all of the methods, we're looking for tools and experiments that will support increasing our technical readiness for advanced reactor concepts. We're giving strong consideration to uh, activities to verify and validate our currently available codes. For high temperature gas reactors, please remember that your separate and mixed effects tests need to be scaled to our specific reactor designs, and all experiments and model validation must be performed to NQA1 standards. Oops. Uh, so that's all I have right now. I believe our technical point of contacts are on the line as well, so if there are any questions for scope, they can help me answer that. Thank you, Diana. I am getting the three technical points of contact on the line right now. David and Hans, are you there? I'm, I'm here. here. Okay, great. I heard both of you. And then Tanju, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, we have everybody here. If you have questions for Diana or the, the technical points of contact, please submit them 
to the GoToWebinar software. We'll start on RC 4.1. Are you looking for computational CFD data sets or exper experimental data sets? Um, I believe we are looking for both, but Tanji, maybe you can uh, help me clarify. Well, I think the, the, it is stated as such that we are open to the computational as well as the experimental data set, but the, really the real intent here is uh, finding a good validation basis for the NEMS tools that, that is being developed on by DOE and E. The, the specific code that we are trying to validate is NEC 5000. So we've done some code-to-code -code comparisons in the past. If you look at the document in Appendix A, you will see a reference for that. We are really looking forward uh, to getting some experimental data to validate those codes, not further verifications. So experiments are encouraged. To say this is Hans, the same is true for the high temperature reactor area. Uh, we're trying to acquire sufficient data for both system and CFD codes to validate uh, whoever is using uh, a code for a high temperature reactor design, uh, codes and models for them. So um, data is, is our highest priority, but we realize that uh, in order to gather data like this and perform the experiment that you want to do pre and post test comparisons with with your own codes. So uh, we, we expect both. How many awards are anticipated and how would they be divided across the reactor designs? Uh, we, we can't say that for sure. So um, I know that we awarded at least one for each area last year. Just to give a scale, for 4.1 there were two awards last year and only one award the previous year. I'm not sure about Hans's area. In the high temperature reactors, we uh, usually awarded two, perhaps uh, three were maybe close to three, depending on which year it was and the funding levels. For RC3, will experimental work be entertained? I think uh, experimental work is always highly uh, sought after, especially if it will help us verify our models. I mean, if you look at the, uh, the optical absorption uh, you know, the elements of this, I don't see how you could generate uh, the data without experimental, uh, uh, some experiments. 